Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps as your first time joining us, we extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you are blessed and edified with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to pray for our nation and those that are in leadership. We want to continue to pray for our local community here. And we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Perhaps you have the special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. We thank you for this incredible opportunity to be a part of the church of the living God. Father, we pray for our nation and those that are in leadership. We pray that you will influence and steer us in the right direction. Father, we also pray for our local community and pray that you will continue to open up doors of utterance. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor, your power, and your presence. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. Praise God. I want to direct your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture in Acts 2. <clears throat> Excuse me, Acts chapter number 2. And we're going to start in verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God, I love that passage of Scripture. It never gets old. I want to talk to us for just a few minutes about... Pursuing revival, pursuing revival. Um, being a home missionary, and we started this church here uh, 27 years ago, it'll be 27 years in May. We have pursued revival for 27 years, and actually before that as a full-time evangelist. So I know just a little bit about pursuing revival. So I just would like to share just a few things. They're not complicated, they're not sophisticated, they're not intellectually based. They're just very, very basic biblical principles. The first thing is, if you're pursuing revival, is that you have to be living right, which means you have to be living, your lifestyle has got to be biblical. It has to be spiritually led, spiritually ordered, and then framed by the word of God. And um, the Bible reveals during the gospel uh, accounts where Jesus talked about that the father rewardeth what he sees in secret. When we gather together here publicly, what you are seeing is a representation of people that are living for God on a private basis uh, at home, and they are coming together and uniting together as a congregation. God blesses that congregation, not just because of our corporate praise and, and worship um, to him, but I also believe it's the fact that you have people that have qualified their praise and qualified their worship and qualified their consecration because they live that way seven days a week. And so here they are, <clears throat> excuse me, living that way seven days a week. They gather together and now God is in their midst. And so I would say that that is the very first and most important factor about revival is that you have to have a certain percentage. Hopefully it's a hundred percent, but we all know concentrically that you're going to have the core, the church and the crowd. We want the crowd there, but the crowd should never be casting a shadow 
on the on the core and the church, the crowd should be there to be pulled in to the nucleus by the power and the demonstration of God and the word of God. And so the most important thing at this point is that people are actually living right. They're living for God in secret. And when we gather together, just like the disciples were, there is an outpouring. And when the Holy Ghost moves, the next thing that happened, even beyond our reading in our text here this morning, you have a demonstration. I find it odd in all of my years of being a student of the Word of God, that there's really only a couple places in the entirety of the New Testament that really even comments on what a public gathering or church service should, should be like. One of the most notable that I can think of just right off the top of my head is found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, where it talks about the gathering together and it specifically addresses the vocal gifts, the gift of prophecy, um, a message in tongues and the interpretation of tongues. And the Apostle Paul, of course, is giving direction um, about that. So things are done decently and in order. But there's a reason why I believe that the New Testament is basically silent is because we already have a picture of what a church service should model. And it's found in Acts chapter number two. It begins with prayer. You have a move of the Holy Ghost. There is a demonstration. Every, every man heard them in their own language, the wonderful works of God. There was a magnifying and a glory, glorifying God. There was a demonstration. And then there was preaching. And then there was a response to preaching. 3,000 souls were baptized. As many as received their word. I think the absolute perfect prototype for New Testament 21st century revival is right in Acts chapter number two. And that is the why, why, as I've already mentioned, that you don't see throughout the entirety of the New Testament on how to have church. The denominational world and the charismatic world is going crazy with all of the books that are written, with trying to trying to reach the 21st century, trying to reach a particular demographic, trying to reach a, uh, a certain ethnic group, trying to reach this, trying to stay relevant, trying to do that. It's nonsense. And it's only evidence that they don't have uh, the authentic, real power of God working in their midst. How to have revival? Live right, pray right, worship right, God will do the rest. Just to have good church. Good church perpetuates real revival. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.